All right, so section 4.3, again, new ways to find the derivative of functions and gives us a whole new group of functions we can find the derivatives of. Now, uh, we just talked about in 4.3, right before this, hopefully you watched the video already, we talked about the product rule, right? So now we're going to talk about the quotient rule. And just like with the product rule, I think you'll find that there's some uh, functions where you have no choice, you got to use the quotient rule. And then there's some functions where you do actually have a choice and it's up to you which way you like better. And so just as before, I'm going to go through three examples that I think will illustrate how to use this. And also similar to the product rule, instead of trying to remember a complicated formula, I'm going to remember it as a pattern instead. That's what has worked for me. And so I think maybe you'll find that it works for you. So looking at this function a, again, notice it's a, it's a function divided by another function. This is a quotient, uh, totally perfect for the quotient rule. So, okay, how does the quotient rule work? Well, if I want to find f prime of x, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write, think of this as a piece of the function and this is another piece. But the order matters uh, how I write this. Now, this is a little bit different than your textbook, but the formula in the end is the same. I'm going to write it top, bottom, stay in that order. So x times 5x plus 2. x times 5x plus 2. Subtract and then divide by the denominator squared, 5x plus 2 squared. Oh, what's nice is, remember the product rule? Write it out twice, add it, first thing gets prime, second thing gets prime. If you do it this way, first thing gets prime, second thing gets prime. So it keeps that pattern. What's different, though, is the minus and this little piece right here. Once you've written it this way, though, it looks complicated, but if you look, the calculus is simple. You've got to find this derivative and this derivative. That isn't so bad because that's the type of stuff we've been finding derivatives of for a couple weeks now. In fact, the derivative of x is just 1. So this first term is just 5x plus 2. And I have minus, and I'm going to put parentheses around this because the minus might distribute across things. Minus x times, and then the derivative of 5x plus 2 is just 5. Okay, now my parentheses look like overkill, right? But we'll fix that in a minute. And then this is divided by 5x plus 2 squared. Oh, this is a minefield right here. Now we did all the calculus and now we're the algebra stage and most people want to simplify quick. And it feels like you should cancel this term and you should cancel this term, but you can't because they're not factors. You can only cancel if a 5x plus 2 appears here and appears here, which it doesn't. So resist that urge unless you see the term here and here to go canceling. So I have to just keep going with my simplification, right? But maybe you already see this is 5x plus 2, but this thing that I made look way too complicated is actually a 5x, right? This is minus 5x. So this is divided by 5x plus 2 squared. Now, 5x minus 5x, of course, is 0. So I'm just left with 2 divided by 5x plus 2 quantity squared. And that is the derivative. I've simplified it basically as much as we really can. Again, it's that pattern. If you can remember the pattern and recognize when you need to use this rule, when you got a clear quotient of two functions, I think you'll be all right. And it's a nice rule and it's, uh, it works very well. So let's look at uh, the second, second example. All right, so for B, I have a function g of x. It's got two terms. We're dividing them. So this looks like a uh, quotient rule. So what I'm going to do is say, okay, g prime of x is right down top bottom, top bottom, except this time I subtract instead of add. First thing gets prime, second thing gets prime, and then divide by the denominator squared. So 1 plus e to the x squared. Okay, now I start going and taking derivatives. This first term right here, 1 minus e to the x, derivative of 1 is 0, so that's going to be gone. Now the negative stays, and then the derivative of e to the x, well, that's e to the x. So that stays. And I got 1 plus e to the x right here. Okay, now I got a minus. This term stays right here. 1 minus e to the x. And then here I have a 1. The derivative of 1 is 0, so that's gone. And then the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And then this is divided by 1 plus e to the x 
square. Now it may not look like it, but I think some stuff could cancel up here if we just mess with terms a little bit. So let's take a look and see how that goes. Remember, you always have an eraser. It doesn't hurt to check, um, especially with something like this. But as you can see, with this minus here and a lot of repeated terms, I think we're going to end up canceling some stuff out. So I'm going to take minus e to the x times 1, distribute this negative e to the x, and then minus e to the x times e to the x is actually minus e to the 2x, because it's minus e to the x squared, but you can bring that 2 in here. And then this is minus 1 plus... Oh, minus 1 times what? e to the x. So this is actually minus e to the x. And then we got uh, e to the x times e to the x. So that'll be also an e to the 2x. I'm leaving the sign off for a second because i got to think about this. Got a negative times a negative. This is going to be positive. Oh, you see what's happening here. Now i got 1 plus e to the x squared. Come down here and say, okay. We got a minus e to the x minus e to the x. Okay, that's minus e to the x, but there's a 2 in front of it now. And then I got minus e of the 2x plus e of the 2x. That's going to be gone. So I just end up with 1 plus e to the x quantity squared. That looks a lot better. I definitely don't want to leave it this way. If there's terms that are going to cancel, you don't want to just leave it unsimplified like that. You know, usually you have some kind of leeway as far as how, how where are you going to take it when you go to simplify. But here, obviously a lot of stuff canceled out. And again, you could tell because we had all these different signs floating around, it definitely seemed like things would cancel. So as you can see with this one, it was a little more complicated, I think, because of the e to the 2x's. you got to remember e to the x times e to the x is e to the x squared, which is the same as e to the 2x. That's a little bit different than what we've dealt with before. But in the end... It was still just a little derivative and a little derivative. All the other work was algebra. Notice here also, we didn't have a choice as to what we could do. There's nothing here that cancels. You definitely can't cancel here or here because they're not factors. So you can't just go canceling. Now, what about C? C looks like something you could cancel right now, right? But remember, if it's not a factor, you can't cancel it. So these X's right here, you cannot go canceling these. It doesn't work that way. So this is certainly a quotient, but there are actually two ways to do this. We'll talk about that in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself some space and say, okay, let me apply the quotient rule. So k prime of x would equal, remember, write it out, top, bottom, x minus 5, x. Order matters, so the x minus 5 is first. It's a subtraction. The product rule is addition, but quotient rule is subtraction. First gets prime, second gets prime. Divided by the denominator squared. Okay, now it's time to start taking the little derivatives. x minus 5 prime, this is 0, derivative of x is 1, so that's really just 1, isn't it? This is going to be 1 times x, just left with x. It's not so bad. Okay, minus x minus 5. Well, x prime is just 1, too, so that's gone. Okay, divide by x squared. And now I'm seeing this isn't so bad at all, because I got x and that negative distributes minus x, then a minus times a minus 5, I got plus 5 over x squared, but maybe you didn't even write this down if you were doing this, because x minus x is 0, right? So this is really 5 over x squared. It's simplified so much compared to the start. So what's going on here? Well, I alluded to the fact that there's another way to do this, and actually, you can't cancel out the x's, but you can do a nice little trick. I'm going to do the trick where you rewrite first. Remember, that's our only trick sometimes. But let me try this. When you have a single term here, a single term in the denominator, you can write this as the first term of the numerator over that, minus, or whatever the sign is, if it was a plus, it'd be a plus, and then the second term over that. This equals this right here. Now, I could do this here, but it's not very helpful because I only got one term, and you can't break it up over the 5x. This is not x over 5x plus x over 2. That is not true here. If I had an x plus 1, I could maybe write it in a strange way of x over this whole thing plus 1 over this whole thing, but it's not helpful at all. But when you have one term in the denominator, you can break up over that term, and that can be really nice because look what happens. x over x, that's a 1 minus 5 over x. If I keep simplifying, this is a 1 minus 5 to the x minus 1. 
Oh, now look at this. Let's take this, the derivative now, k prime of x, derivative of 1, 0, derivative of minus 5 x to the minus 1. Well, I keep the minus 5, right? So my minus 5 stays. I got x to the minus 2 now, but what happened? That minus 1, remember, it comes down, so this is times a minus 1. And so I got positive 5 x to the minus 2. And I got 5 over x squared, the exact same thing. Uh, which one was easier? I'm not sure. It kind of is all about what method you like better. I think in a way this is risky if you're not real comfortable with algebra because maybe you will do it accidentally when it doesn't apply. But if you're comfortable with why this works, this can be pretty quick. You see here we were in danger of missing a sign. We had to think about this for a second and we could end up with a negative where we should have had a positive. Whereas here, the same thing could have happened with distributing the negative. So I'm not sure if one is easier than the other. It's just a different method, and you have to decide which method you like better. So here in C, we had a choice. A and B, we had no choice because of the way that they are. That's what you want to practice is recognizing when you have a choice and when you don't. And the online homework does a good job of telling you when you have a choice so you can start thinking about that ahead of time.